still continuing on with solving systems of linear equations. I have another example in this one here, so let's just get right to it. Solve the system of equations again by your choice, and by that I mean by substitution or elimination, and I encourage you to graph this to check your answer. So this is the perfect time to pause the video and double check up on your skills to see if you know how to do this correctly. Okay, I'm going to do this one by substitution just so you see equal amount of examples of both methods. Um, I do see a single y variable here, so that's most likely going to be the easiest to solve for. So if I solve for that, that gives me y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. What I then do is I substitute it in for my y in my second equation. That gives me 4x plus 2 times negative 2x plus 5 is equal to 8. Distribute this through, that gives me 4x minus 4x plus 10 is equal to 8. And if I look at it here, you might think, uh-oh, we did something wrong. But we actually did not. The 4x's cancel out, and so that leaves me with a false equation because 10 will never be equivalent to 8. So we have to figure out what exactly is happening here. What happens when we solve this, either by substitution or elimination, again, I did this one by substitution, but if you did it by elimination, you'd be coming down to the same thing, a false equation. What does that actually mean? Okay, we need to go back and we need to think about what are we in fact trying to do here? Well, the very first thing I showed you was a visual representation. We are trying to solve the system of equations, and normally that means we have a point of intersection. Okay. Well, what happens if we have a false statement? That means that we don't have a point of intersection. So what can possibly happen to not give us a point of intersection between two lines? And hopefully you have it picked out. This means that we have parallel lines. These lines will run side by side forever, and they will never intersect each other. So it is possible to solve a system of equations to come down to a false equation, because 10 will never equal to 8. If that's the case, you have parallel lines. And if you're looking for the point of intersection, these parallel lines will never intersect. And so you do not have any solutions to this problem. So the answer would be no solution. So one more time, a false statement means parallel lines, which means there is not a solution. OK, let me give you another example. 2x plus y is equal to 4. And then my second equation is negative 6x minus 3y is equal to negative 12. Again, I suggest that you pause the video, solve this system of equations by substitution or elimination, and see if you can come up to the answer with this one. Okay, doesn't matter which method I choose because they're going to be the same, so let me just go to elimination method. I'm going to eliminate my y's, and I'm going to do that by multiplying the first equation by 3. When I distribute that through, that gives me 6x plus 3y is equal to 12. And combining that with the second equation, and I add these two equations together, you most likely notice that, uh-oh, something really unusual is happening here. So not only do I eliminate the y's, but I, in fact, eliminate every single thing on this equation. So what happens is I come down to a 0 on the left-hand side of my equation, and I also come down to a 0 on the right-hand side of my equation. So you might think, oh, well, this is just like the last example. We just got a false statement, parallel line, so on and so forth. But in fact, this is completely different. Notice I have a true equation here. I have 0 is equivalent to 0. So again, doesn't matter whether you do elimination or substitution. If you ever come down to a true statement that is different than parallel lines, meaning no solution. Well, let's think about this one for a moment. Let's see if we can come up with a visual representation of this one. 
So let me solve for y here. That gives me y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. And if I solve for y here, that gives me negative 3y is equal to 6x minus 12. Divide by negative 3 gives me y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. So this was my first equation. This was my second equation. Take a look at these equations. You should notice that they are exactly the same. So if you ever come down to a true statement, that means you actually have the exact same line in both equations. Now, if I were to graph this, and let me do a really rough sketch here. So I have my y value of 4 and my slope of negative 2. So down 2 over 1. That gives me my first line. And if I were to graph it again, exact same line, I see that these lines are, like I said before, the exact same line just stacked up on top of each other. So if we're looking for points of intersection, we actually see that there's infinitely many of them. There's a point of intersection here, here, and here, which we plotted, but there's actually points of intersection everywhere. So we cannot just say that it's the same line. We actually have to look for what is our true solution. Now, I cannot just say all answers, because if I look at a different point, such as right here, this is not an answer because that's not on my line. Same thing over here. This is not an answer because that's not on my line. So I need all points that are just on this line. Well, easy enough, we actually already have that done. Since we solve for y, that gives us all y solutions that compare to the x solution. So if I list my ordered pair format, I get my y solution of negative 2x plus 4, and then my x just is what it is. Now, you could also do this by solving for the x variable. You would just have something here in terms of y, some expression in terms of y, and then you'd have your y variable there if you chose to do it like that. That would be perfectly fine as well. But let me show you why this answer works. Because if I pick an x variable, let's just say hypothetically I pick 1, and then I also put that variable in for here and here. So my y variable would be negative 2 times 1 plus 4, or positive 2. Well, that gives me a point on my line. If I pick a different x variable like 5, and I plug it in here, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 plus 4, that gives me negative 6. So that would give me another point on this line. It'd be farther down than it would be a point on this line. So this here gives me infinitely many points that are associated with this line. So don't ever just say it's a true statement and there's infinitely many solutions. You must specify what exactly those solutions are. And again, you can do that by solving for the y variable that looks like this, or you could have done it by solving for the x variable that looks like this. So this video is over the unique things that can happen when we're trying to find points of intersection. We can see that they, in fact, never intersect because they're parallel lines. That gives us the answer of no solution. Or we can see that they will intersect at every single place because they're the exact same line. And so that gives you infinitely many solutions, which you must specify what they are. And that sums up this video here. And in the next video, of course, we're going to crank up the heat one more notch. And we're going to see what else we can do with things that are similar to this.